Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and welcome to another episode of what I'm playing. As you see here, we are playing Super Mario Maker 2, which I've been playing a lot of since it came out. Well, maybe not a whole lot compared to some people, but I've been spending pretty much all my gaming time with this game uh, since it came out, and it's uh, it's been fantastic. It really has. Um, so let's talk about what they've changed, what they've improved, what they might not have improved with it, possibly. And let's uh, take a look at that. So Super Mario Maker 2 was a pleasant surprise, obviously. The first Mario Maker was the game that got me to buy a Wii U. Um, I held out for quite a long time and got trolled there. <laughs> but I held out for quite a long time during that era, but Super Mario Maker was the game that convinced me it basically told me that I needed to get a Wii U, that I needed to be part of what this game was all about, and I enjoyed it quite a lot. I played a lot of Super Mario Maker back then. I made probably over a dozen courses that I uploaded at least, and just had a lot of fun with it. And so Super Mario Maker 2 was obviously a no-brainer, you know, because of being a big fan of the first game, duh, you know. But they've done a lot more than I expected them to do with that game. I thought they were going to kind of play it safe a bit with Super Mario Maker 2. Basically make it a more of the same kind of affair. And that's not the case. There is a lot of new stuff. For example, of course, we have the Super Mario 3D World stuff, which obviously it's not the stuff where you can move in and out. It's just side-scrolling portions of that game but it's really cool that they added that in there and they even have an empty spot which kind of suggests that perhaps there will be some kind of add-on or dlc down the road whether that's going to be paid or going to have a cost it's tough to say but that's really cool that they're going to do that now if it is paid i hope they make it to where you only have to pay to make courses in that template and they still let anybody play in those course templates because it would suck otherwise, I would, I would think, you know, if they're going to charge you just to play those courses. Plus, that'll kind of alienate the community a little bit. Because only people that have that template is even going to have the ability to play those courses. And that would be a bad idea on their part. I'm not sure if there's anything up here yet. There's a door up there. I might need to go to that door. I don't know. I'm just playing an endless challenge just through normal difficulty. Stuff that's not too challenging so I can kind of talk about my thoughts on the game. So, first of all, they added a story mode, which is really cool because in the uh, first Mario Maker, they didn't really have a real story mode. They just had basically a set of levels that you could play. Like there was like 10 sets of 10 levels or something like that to progress through that. And... It didn't really accomplish much. You, you got to unlock a couple of things, but it could have been better. Yeah, it definitely could have been better as far as that. They improved it quite a lot uh, with the story mode. For example, they have this whole silly story about rebuilding the castle and all that stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, you get to kind of do little side missions for people and you get to play a large variety of levels and the amount of creativity that's on display from the first game to the second is is astounding because in the uh, first game, Nintendo's creativity was kind of limited. And it wasn't until other people got their hands on the game that we really got to see just what people were capable of with the tool set. Making all these crazy levels that uh, really kind of pushed the envelope. You know, they were able to make levels like the auto-scrolling levels, of course, which is really cool. You know, the levels that basically play themselves. The levels that use the um, functions such as the sound effects and music to kind of make like a symphony of sorts. Uh, just all kinds of interesting little ideas that Nintendo themselves didn't really implement the first time around. But obviously they saw what their tool set was capable of for this game and they added a lot of really cool Nintendo made levels that really take this stuff to heart. Now of course the community is already hard at work making new levels with some of the new tool sets that they have as well as recreating 
you know, fan favorites from that original game. And it's it's been a blast. It's really been a lot of fun to see all of the creations, both new and old, kind of making a comeback with Super Mario Maker 2. So, no complaints with that, I tell you what. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's just been a good time, guys. I hope you uh, get a chance to check this game out if you have a Nintendo Switch. If not, this game is very likely a reason to get one. You know, you're very likely going to want to have a Switch. You know, after seeing what you can do in this game, what you can play, um, all this crazy stuff. Yeah, I don't know how I can get up there exactly. I guess I'm just going to go out of here and we'll just activate this checkpoint, because why not crush this little uh, guy that shoots the wrenches? Kind of weird. It's kind of weird that they still have those characters, because they look kind of like little handguns, and you figure that, <laughs> you know, some kind of, like, Family rights act activists would have gotten Nintendo to got rid of that character design by now, but they didn't. Ah, oh, great. Kind of screwed now, ain't I? Guess I can go this way. Ah, okay. I was like literally a quarter second too late there. So that's not a good uh good way to start that off. But this person at least was fortunate enough, or generous enough rather. To give us a uh, checkpoint of sorts. We're definitely going to be taking advantage of that. Let's get our mushroom, though. This is kind of an unusual stage design, I must say. Uh, they definitely uh, have taken a liking to the slopes. You know, they definitely wanted to utilize that part uh, of the new tool set, essentially. That's kind of interesting that those little uh, spiny guys can climb up on the... Uh, Chomps or whatever, not the chomps, but the thwomps or whatever they're called. Ah, oh, great! Well, that's fantastic. This will be interesting here. I don't think it'll be possible for me to get through now. I guess I'm gonna have to finish my character off there. Try it again. So they've added a lot of cool stuff to the tool sets. As you can see, they added stuff like slopes. They added some new kinds of blocks, new enemies. And they added a lot of cool things to do with that stuff, you know, because the original Mario Maker gave us a lot of cool little tricks that were kind of outside of the boundaries of a normal Mario game. So I applaud a lot of the new changes there. It really shows that they just had a lot of fun making this game, you know, making it what it is and more importantly, what it can be. You know, because this is a game that evolves. This is all based on user-generated content, player-created content, and it does so in a fashion that is just a lot of fun. The best way I can put it, guys. Okay. Great, thank you very much. I appreciate you doing that. Me? Oh, gosh, this is tough. This is a lot tougher than I imagined it would be. It's because of those Hammer Brothers, those pesky Hammer Brothers. And that is something, of course, that this game does have its flaws with, is it's all entirely based on the user-generated content. That is going to define your experience for good and bad with Super Mario Maker 2, you know? So it's tricky. It really is very tricky to deal with that stuff because... Okay. I right, we'll have to wait until uh, yeah, they shoot the hammers. I want to try to keep... There we go. So that way I can do my spin jump and just rush through here real quick. And we can finally make it to the exit. Fantastic, we made it. <laughs> so that little voyage is over with it. I can finally progress to another stage. Let me show you guys a little taste of what you can expect. Uh, but let me go ahead and... Hop over to a couple of the user created levels that I actually have already downloaded to my system here. I want to show you guys an example of the kind of content that you can see. You know, there's my levels, of course. I will uh, go ahead and share on here the code, I think. How do I uh, share that? I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, maybe I can go in here. 
I don't know if it's going to pop up the course ID. No, it does not. Okay. I really want to share that with you guys, but I don't know exactly how to do that. So I will just pop it in the uh, description or whatever, whenever I find it. And that way you guys can check it out. But I want to kind of show you a level that I thought was really cool. That uh, I had a lot of fun with. This Megalovania Rhythm Challenge. This is just an example of a type of level that you can do in this uh, program here. You know, this is a, a mission that's all about rhythm. You gotta jump and run to the rhythm. So you have to have rhythm, unlike me, for one to succeed in beating this level. Actually, I did beat it live on stream. But, uh, you gotta pay attention. So this was a demonstration of what you can do with that because with those particular music blocks, it kind of plays a song as you run through. Oh, great. Messed up there. There, I probably could have done a little better with it. But, you know, it's just a little demonstration of some of the cool stuff that you can uh, pull off with this game. If I was doing this when I'm playing series a while back, I would have covered Undertale. I had a lot of fun with Undertale. As a matter of fact, I did do a review on my channel. I'll go ahead and pop a link in the description for that so you guys can check it out. So I kind of messed that up a little bit because I should have kept the rhythm of the song, but you don't have to there. You know, just a nice little fun shindig that is just one of billions trillions quadzillions or quadrillions of combinations in super mario maker 2 a lot of fun guys it really is um let's see if i could beat this one here this was one that uh i played live on stream i could never beat it <laughs> it's a very tough level as you saw the uh Mission accomplishment objective was very tough, but this is just another example of a level that you can do. This one's a puzzle-based level. You have to grab all the coins in order to succeed, and, you know, if you, without that, you're not going to make it. You're not going to succeed. And I will get myself killed there, probably, because I was very foolish in running through, uh, because there are those spinies that drop... At the timing that they do, which if you're just running through, you're going to get hit. You have to kind of take it carefully. You know, there's a little bit of trial and error, I guess, is the best way to put this here. So I'm going to have to be careful here with proceeding here. Now we can jump up safely across. There is a spiny right there we have to keep in mind. And another. Great. Thank you very much, spinies. Go ahead and move on here. Got a little raccoon and we can jump over here. We just got to do the quick little slide thing. Grab our first coin. Hit that, of course. Now we've got in here. Get our second coin. And we don't have spinies to worry about, so that's fantastic. It's really not a tough stage, but I never beat it because of the secondary segment of the stage, which, uh, you know, I, ha I was limited for time during that live stream, so I couldn't just go and constantly... Play this stage over and over. You know, I was crunched for time. So I've got a little bit of puzzle on me here. I've got to use these conveyor belts in a way to get that plow block so I can defeat giant plant. We'll just go ahead and kick it into it, because why not? Alright, I wonder if flying is really going to be much of a thing to worry about in these Mario Maker games. Probably not. You know, a lot of people have very different design philosophies from Nintendo uh, with this game, but it is kind of fun to see uh, someone pull out a Nintendo-like stage with the tool set, you know, and basically do their best to emulate Nintendo. You know, it's really cool to see that kind of contrast and difference there. Do that. I didn't want those turtles to possibly get stuck in there and screw me over. Now we've got the last one right there that we need to get. 
Now, there is a, a P block I could have used. Yeah, right here. So we can use this fancy dancy P block to get what we want instead. Yep, so we got it. And now we can move on to the second part. Maybe I can beat it live here on this video. But it's a little ridiculous because it's just a, basically a giant death trap. A lot of stuff here that's ready and willing and able to kill your character. So, yeah. I think I have to tank a hit there. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you very much, game. Haha. <laughs> That's not at all what I intended to do, so I have to redo that part and probably take the hit again. I mean, I guess you probably can get through there with Big Mario. I'm sure you can, but it's going to require, like, extremely precise timing, which I don't really do very good. So I'm just going to tank the hit and hopefully I don't get hit again. Go. Alright, so we have to manipulate the spikes in a fashion... Did not get hit by that one there. So, like I said, very tricky. Very tricky indeed. Uh, but, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy levels like that. That give you a good challenge, but not like a crazy trolley challenge. You know, a lot of people unfortunately make levels like that. My first couple levels I uploaded, not exactly the best levels. But I didn't spend very much time on them either. I just kind of wanted to put a couple of things out there for you guys to try to uh, challenge yourselves. At least I didn't do nothing like my friend Alex here, who was clearly punishing me for a level I made with the original Mario Maker. I made a level called Flappy Mario, where you had to use the cape basically to do like Flappy Bird, and it was a very trolly level. And I never could even clear this one jump here to even proceed with trying to play this level here. It's requires super precision because you can't go too low because you're going to hit that bottom spike you can't go too high because then you're going to hit the top spike i know for a fact that you'll have to use the r because it gives mario a little bit of a floaty property but you have to jump and then use the r because it functions a little bit differently with this palette versus the uh you know new super mario brothers palette i think this is the uh the Super Mario 3D World palette instead, and the mechanics are just slightly different, so a lot of people won't be wondering, well, why do they even have the different palettes? Why not just add the power-ups from Super Mario 3D World to, you know, Super Mario U, you know? But, like I said, they do function a little bit differently. So, anyways, Alex got his Just Revenge on me. And I'm sure that, uh... Maybe by the time he has a chance to watch this video, he's about to have his uh, first kid, which is going to be fantastic. I appreciate it. And he's been a long supporter of the channel. Uh, not much of a commenter, though I've noticed. <laughs> Maybe I can get him to comment on this one. <laughs> if nothing else, just to laugh at me still trying to beat his level and failing. <laughs> But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this episode of what I'm playing. I'll be playing Super Mario Maker for a while. I'm not even sure what game I'm going to cover next. Because I really haven't been playing much else. But I will think of something. Maybe I'll just pull something a little bit out of the backlog. Something I've played recently. And uh, we'll talk about that, perhaps. But till then, down Phoenix out. <laughs>